In this bass lesson, you're going to get three tips for memorizing any scale on your bass. Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and if you've ever struggled with learning scales, stick around. You'll learn the easy way of remembering all your scales, plus you'll learn how to practice them so you'll never forget them. There's no getting around it. Learning scales can be intimidating. There are hundreds of them, and it can seem like you'll never be able to keep them all in your head. Don't worry though, it is very possible to make them all stick. You just have to follow these three tips. Tip number one, climb the mountain one step at a time. That means only learning one scale at a time. This is a classic mistake that bass players make. They, they see that there are tons of scales that they could potentially learn, so they try and learn all of them at once. They want to learn the major scales, the modes of the major scale, the different shapes of the pentatonics, the harmonic minors, the melodic minors, blues scales, the list goes on. And of course, when they try to do all of that at once, what happens? Nothing really sticks. Put it this way, if you ask your computer to do 12,000 things at maximum output all at once, what's gonna happen? Uh, well, either your computer will crash, or if it doesn't, it'll take ages to get anything done. It's the same thing when you try and cram tons of scales into your head all at once. You end up learning very little, or you just give up. When you focus on just one scale at a time, though, things are very different. You can devote 100% of your focus to mastering just one scale or mode. You'll learn it much faster, and you'll also learn it at a much deeper level. Learning how to play one scale a hundred different ways is infinitely more useful than learning how to play a hundred scales in only one way. Now, do you think you could learn just one scale? Of course you can. And when you've mastered that one, you can move on to the next and the next and the next until you've mastered all the scales that you need. This leads nicely to tip number two, which is to aim for a deep, thorough understanding of every scale that you learn. Now, how do you do this? By thinking of every scale in multiple different ways. For example, if we take the major scale, we can think of it in terms of the shape of the scale on your bass. We can uh, use the classic one, fingers on uh, two, four on the A string, fingers one, two, four on the D, and then one, three, four on the G. And of course, that'll work starting on your uh, E string as well. Yeah, you can use the three notes per string shape. That's this one. One, two, four, one, two, four, one, two. And you can extend that shape up again with one, two, four, one, two, four again. Now that's just two ways of thinking only about the shape of the scale. You can think of the intervals and how they relate to the root. So you've got the root, you've got a major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and then the root. You can also think in terms of the sequence of whole steps and half steps that most scales are made up of. For example, with a major scale, you start on your first note, then go up one whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and then half step. This means that you can figure out your own shapes and everything for the scales and the modes you're learning if you know the kind of sequence of whole steps and half steps. You can think in terms of numbers as well. Obviously, with the major scale, we just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. But for a Dorian scale or something, we'd have one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, and one. That's relating everything back to the major scale. Do you see how deep you can go with all of this? Most beginners only think of their scales in one dimension. But once you start to look at it from other angles like this, you start to get a much deeper understanding of each scale and how everything fits around it. The more ways you can conceive of every scale you learn, the stronger it will be on your mind. And if the music is strong in your mind, it'll come out strong when you play it on your bass. Finally, for tip number three, learn the sound of each scale and sing it as you learn it. Just doing this will make it stick in your mind like nothing else. Now at the start, it might be a bit tricky. Some of the scales and modes are very similar. Sometimes there's only one note difference between one scale and the next. And some of the scales, they're kind of tricky to sing. They've got awkward intervals in them. But if you learn the sound of the scale as you're learning the mechanics of the scale, the two will be inseparable in your mind and you'll never forget either. Wherever you can, try to activate your ears wherever possible. If you're learning your major scale, sing the notes of that scale as you play them. You don't have to have a beautiful singing voice, you're just linking the sound of the scale with the notes, shapes, and intervals on your bass. 
you might just start off by going up and down the scale. So. Yeah, just up and down. Very simple to start with. Uh, you might want to try doing little exercises and games with the scale once you get a bit more comfortable. Uh, like you might go up in diatonic thirds. So. Like that. Uh, you might try, uh, let's try going up four notes starting on the tonic, then go back to the second note of the scale and go up four notes and repeat that process. So it'd sound like this. Run out of breath. <laughs> Yeah, so once the mechanics of the scale and the sound of the scale has settled in your mind, and you can do that with all kinds of different exercises and kind of games like this, after that you might want to try playing around with the sound over a drone or something. Yeah, so almost connect it with real music. So I've got one right here, just an E-flat drone, and I'm going to just uh, try and play around with the sound the way a child would play with a toy. It's a really, really low pressure and very playful way of kind of working on scales. So it's going to sound like this. So there's our E flat drone, and if we're using the E flat major scale, we might do something like this. Something like that. And by the way, you don't just have to use the major scale, you can use these kind of drones with any kind of scale that you're using. By the way, if you want a little bit more uh, detail on this process, check out my lesson called The Key to Melodic Soloing on Bass. It uh, goes kind of deeper into this whole process, and I think you might find it really helpful. The next question that a lot of people have is where should they start with learning scales? There are just so many. So which ones are going to give you the best bang for your buck? Well, I'd recommend you start by learning the plain old major scale. It's the foundation for so much Western music, so it really pays to know it inside and out in as many different ways as possible. From there, you can learn the modes of the major scale, obviously one at a time. And if you know these, there are relatively few situations where you'll be left wondering exactly what you can play. They are immeasurably useful. Now, if you'd like to get started on the road to mastering the major scale plus its modes, then check out my ultimate guide to the modes for bass. It's a simple, jargon-free guide that will show you exactly how the major scale and the modes work, and it's totally free as well. To get it, just click the link in the description, sign up on that page, and I'll send you the guide two videos plus 24 different practice tracks so you can get started practicing these in less than 60 seconds. To recap though, you learned three tips for learning and memorizing your scales on bass. You learned that it's best to learn scales one at a time. Tip two was to learn every scale in multiple different ways so you know they'll stick. And finally, you learned to sing the sound of the scales you were learning so you can link the sound and the mechanics of the scale in your mind. You've got a couple of different ways of doing that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the company. I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and I'll see you soon.